was floundering. Do you understand? Going under. All that work I put into it, and so few visited, let alone donated. Oh, oh, I don't mean you, of course. I know you're a friend to the Leverian. You just wasn't enough. So when Parvos made me an offer, I thought, oh, why not? Just let it go. Let it all go. I took the deal, Tenno. I shouldn't have, but I did. Oh, if only Dante was still around. Please, you must come see me. Ah, uh, hello, friend. You find me now amidst the bones of all I am, of the thing that mattered most to me in my too long life. You know, I wasn't sure it was possible to be less than a man, for I was a man once. This room was to be a shrine to one of my dearest friends, but now that shall never come to pass. Look around, and I will recount what was meant to be. I've made such a terrible mistake, you see. In a universe at its own throat, where every living thing works daily to keep body and soul together, there's not much appetite for history, for stories. The Leverian may not be a real place, a place you can reach out and touch, but to reality it was anchored. And reality demands a tithe. It takes coin to keep this place rest, this shrine to memory, and a savvy businessman I was not. To be less than a man is to be a fool, and fool I was. Did I never tell you of Dante? No, I suppose I didn't. I suppose I hadn't the fortitude. The entirety of the Leverian is shaped by the lack of him, though perhaps only in ways that I can see. Though, by definition, a weapon of war, Dante was, first and foremost, a student of history. And he was my friend. Truthfully, much of the Leverian would not exist were it not for that bold, two-fisted academician's devotion to both myself and the cause of better understanding our history and ourselves. It shames me to think of what he would have to say about what I have done to our shared endeavor. Parvos Granum, you know the name, he of the gilded hand and gilded tongue. For an age he has sought what Dante and I had gathered together, our collected treasures. For one such as Granum, there is no such thing as enough. In an age with no appetite for memory, maintaining a shrine to our shared history seemed folly. And so, in a low moment, I signed it all away. I 
I do not know what possessed me in that moment. I have no need for money, or food, or shelter, or care. Perhaps I merely felt my time was done, that the past had served its use, and me along with it. Whatever the reason, I allowed myself an instant to feel my misery to be greater than my life's purpose. A momentary indulgence that may be paid by every future generation until the sun goes dark. I would give much for my friend to have been here. Dante and I, we tempered each other's unique compulsions. You would have liked Dante, I feel. His end began, as it did for so many souls, with the Entrati family. The patriarch of that benighted family had fallen into decadence and disrepute, his name sullied by controversy and implications of madness. Then an erstwhile associate of mine, a gentleman by the name of Lloyd, a master in Trati's man for more than a lifetime, well, vanished. Lloyd, his master, and his entire lineage, just gone. There were rumors, of course. Master Entrati was known at that time for outlandish claims and questionable science relating to voices he was hearing, I believe. Gods from beyond the veil and whatnot. After the disappearances, Dante, never one to let a good mystery go, insisted on infiltrating the Entrati manse and learning the truth for himself. I, however, being more familiar with the uh, confidential details of Master Entrati's interests, urged him otherwise. I suppose you wonder why I would do such a thing if I believed Master Entrati to be fit for little more than the asylum. Lloyd was, as I said, a dear friend. We spoke often. His last missive to me was a simple one. We end as we began. As a student of history and its occult apocrypha, I know the terrible import of those words. And so I cautioned Dante to remain by my side. He promised to do so, then did otherwise. And I never saw him again. Perhaps I was not so deft at tempering him as he was of me. And that, I suppose, was my first great failing. The parent of this second and most final one. I imagine you surmised why I have summoned you here. To ask that, in the name of whatever friendship we share, to lend your aid to my impossible predicament. To help preserve, not me, not this shadow of a man I once was, but to keep this monument to history alive, so that future generations may learn from it and never repeat our most shameful mistakes. Granum's obsession with that bygone age demands pieces of such. Ironic, really, that one man's interest in history serves only to strip an edifice whose singular purpose was to protect it. But there remains one slim hope. The sourcing of artifacts from places other than the Leverian sourced by you at my direction. Help me, friend. Help me, that my one 
great and final mistake not be the error that turns our collective history and the work of lifetimes to a single miserable use, making a rich man richer. Messages make me ill.